Hallelujah. Now I want to take your Bibles with me and turn to the book of Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 1. Father, we bless you for your holy word written for us, revealed from heaven, that it might bring life and the revelation and the light of who you are. We thank you now for your blessing on this word and your mighty anointing that touches our lives. And today we believe we'll be transformed by the hearing of your word. We'll be empowered by the hearing of your word. And everybody said, Amen Amen and Amen. Well, I want to speak to you today about the anointing of a father. Fathers are very important. And developing the right priorities are crucial for us to be successful as fathers. Amen. When God created man... He gave him a job. When God created us and put us in our homes as fathers, He gave us a place, a position, an authority of being priests and kings of our household. To guide our households, to guard, to protect, to love, to govern, to direct, and to lead. Hallelujah. That job description remains today. And thank God when we come to this time, He is restoring the fathers. Somebody say amen. Amen. When a man accepts the assignment from God as a father, the family structure falls into place. When a father refuses to accept responsibility, and unfortunately there are those who uh, do not know what the role of a father is, the result will be a family that's out of order. The result will be a family that's even out of control. I'm talking today today about the anointing that is on a father. It is a God-given task, a place that God has prepared for him. I like what what the youth were saying. God employed you. Fathers, God employed you. You are employed. Hallelujah. It comes with a job description. And the father's role in the family is crucial. Lots and many and most of the ills of society can be tracked right back to the absence of fathers. And the enemy works as hard as he can to break the role of a father. But thank God he is restoring them. Amen. God chose Abraham to lead his family. He chose him to take them into the promised land. A God-fearing father will bring his family into their destiny. They will live in a land flowing with milk and honey. Somebody say amen. Amen. You know, just as the Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, so righteousness exalts a family. Fathers give their children identity. It's important we understand that because even if you think of it, a whole family is known by the surname of its father. We will say uh, things like, you know, well, there goes the von Skolkweg family. Oh, yeah, he's obviously one of the governors. You can just see it. Why? Because the identity are there. They're just like him. It's amazing that every family has a character about it. Amen. Some families are loud, boisterous. Some families are quiet. Some families are are very intellectual. Uh, It's just amazing how you'd see the different families with their identities. Amen. And uh, the whole family is identified around that father and uh, a name is very important and fathers realize today that you're busy building a name from the day you become a father I'll never I'll never forget when my first child was born and suddenly I felt my shoulders go two inches wider and I felt the responsibility come and you suddenly realized this is something You start building a name from the moment that you become a father. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 22 verse 1, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. 
that name brings honor to your family. Amen. When a father is present, the walls of protection are built around his family. God chose Abraham to lead his family. He didn't choose Sarah. He chose Abraham to lead that family. I want the fathers to say with me today, I am the head of the home, anointed by God, employed by God to lead my family. I like that. I'm going to keep that saying. Amen. You employed by God. Hallelujah. Fathers, you are the head of the family and God backs you. When God gives authority, it is set. It is eternal. It is a spiritual law. So when a father speaks, authority is set in motion over his family. You are the head. You are the one who God anoints to lead your family for direction, for principles, for the beliefs of your family. You are the one, you know, somebody said, well, I'm the head of the family. I'm the Khrut boss. <laughs> and in a way it's true. But you know, when God says you're the head of the family, he says, I'm holding you responsible. When somebody is the head of the department, something goes wrong in the department, you say, I want to speak to the responsible person. And so, as the head of the home, it is actually not, not just an authority given, it is a stewardship that is required from us. And we are responsible as stewards to God. Amen. And uh, we are to lead our families like Paul said, follow me. As I follow God. A godly father leads his family into a godly lifestyle. Amen. And not only does God hold you responsible, but God gives you the power to do it. He gives you the authority to do it. And he anoints you to do it. And he gives his angels charge to watch over you. To help you, somebody say, Amen. I want to say this to fathers. If you don't sit on the throne of your home, somebody else will. Amen. Now, I don't want somebody else sitting on the throne of my household. God has given that place to me. And if you don't sit on your throne, legacies will be lost. Inheritances will be for, foregone and lost. You know, there are many examples how... Families have no restraint because of an absent father. Amen. When the father is present, there is direction. There is vision. Hallelujah. And when a father is present, the wife can be who God called her to be. Can I say it again? When a father is present, a mother can be a mother. I want to take it to this side of the congregation. When a father is present, Amen. a wife can be a mother. Amen. Amen. If he's not, she will be compelled to take up the space. Amen. And she cannot do it because that's not her task. She's not uniquely equipped for it. God anointed him. Amen. I want to say this also. A woman will greatly respect and honor a man who sets godly principles in order in his home. Amen. And she will follow that leadership. When a woman objects to leaderships because the man wants to act like a boy. Amen. Boys are not fathers. Ed Cole said it this way, this way. He said, we are male by birth, but man by choice. Fathers need to set an example. When he does, a woman will gladly follow that example and set the house accordingly. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. When good men do nothing, marriages, families, communities, and countries perish. God called us to take that place. Man's place is not the bar. 
Man's place is to be with the young lions. Man's place is to be a leader of his sons and his daughters. Hallelujah. Man's place is not to be the champion of the local club. Man's place is to be the champion of the household. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Amen. We, we're not blinded by the God of this world and what they put ahead of us. What is it? What it is? You know, to be a real man, you know, you drink lion. Amen. And you smoke Peter Stuyvesant. Then you're a man's man. No, you're not. A real man takes his place. And receives from God the authority that he gave him. Amen. Let me tell you, when good men, when men fail to correct their sons, there are tragic consequences in the family. And uh, I want to lift before you the example of Eli. The Bible says Eli was a priest and his sons were called to the priesthood. In fact, because of that, his sons were priests. But their, their sons brought such disrespect. And shame to the office of the priesthood that people forsook the temple. And that the whole, the whole temple got a bad name. And there was no honor. The Bible says these sons started, they disrespected the offering. They disrespected the people. They didn't fulfill their task. When the people brought the offerings, they went and took the best for themselves. They, they, they were totally out of order. And Eli was right there, and he brought no correction. If you do not correct your family, the borders will not be set. Amen. We are to set the borders. We are to set the vision. Eli did not set borders, and he did not discipline his sons. And it brought a curse on his family and on himself. His sons, Hophni and Phineas lacked vision because he did not take his place. Because Eli did not stand in the office that God gave him and set, the, set the, the vision and the direction and set the principles of the household and of the priesthood, his sons had no sense of destiny. They, had, they lacked responsibility. They had no honor. They had no self-respect. They brought shame to the ministry of the priesthood. They had no fear of God. They brought shame to Eli. And we still speak about it today. They also became disrespectful. Amen. Listen, fathers. Teach your children respect. Amen. Teach them to respect their mother. Hello? Oh, often, hey, 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 you don't talk to your mother like that. Amen. They go back very quickly, otherwise they know. If they don't go back quickly and sort it out, they go to the bathroom, straight to the bathroom. You don't pass beginning. You don't collect 200 grand. You go straight to the bathroom. Amen. We must teach them respect. Hallelujah. And honor. I don't think it's healthy for children to call their fathers by his first name. They are not your chummies. Amen. We must, we must receive our responsibility to be fathers. To be dads. Amen. My children do not call me by my first name. Amen. I remember the day my son brought one of his friends home. And his friend said to me, hey Johnny. I said, who's your Johnny? Don't come try your nonsense here in my house. Son. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We need to take the place that God has given us. Amen. Not acting when correction needs to be brought was fatal to Eli and to the whole priesthood. Not acting when correction was needed uh, resulted in various things in Eli's life. Number one. The priest of God hardly heard the Lord speaking to him. Divine order brings the voice of God. Amen. 
That's why in the house there needs to be order. Because if there's no order, God will not respect disorder. When there's no honor, God will not respect it. And while I'm at that, if you honor God, be at church early. Don't arrive late. Don't tell me you honor God and you arrive halfway through praise and worship. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Amen. You go to a board meeting with your boss and you walk in 15 minutes late and see how much he will, he will honor that. He will not honor that. And it's something that we've said a while ago and I must congratulate most of this congregation are starting to do it. Amen. And I want us to honor God. I want us to have excellence about us. Amen. I want us to have discipline about us. I want us to arrive at church quarter two. Amen. Listen, it takes as much effort to arrive late at church as it takes to arrive early. Amen. It takes just the same amount of effort. So we, we, need, to, we need to set order and discipline and honor. And in your family, have honor. Amen. Honor your wife. So that the children will honor her. Wives, honor your husband. Don't speak bad about him. I say, oh, oh, this is your dad. Your dad's stupid. You don't know what he's talking about. I know what's good for my children. <laughs> Amen. What are you doing? You're teaching your children disrespect. Dishonor. And it will not turn out well for you. Right. Amen. Amen. So... Not bringing correction to, to his sons caused Eli to dishonor the Lord in front of the Israelites. He opened a door to much sin. What happened? Self-indulgence. Self-enrichment. Plundering of the Lord's house. A lifestyle in his children of life is all about me. And my needs. A culture of fathers without backbone. And disrespect for God's values. And you know, I believe God gave men that place in the home. God gave mothers the place of being the compassionate, soft. Doesn't matter what you do, I still love you. It's kind of what I see in life. But he gives fathers, hey, you sharpen up, boy. Amen. Hallelujah. God's given us that place. And he's given us the place of loving them, seeing them for who they are, directing them into their call. Amen. And cutting off the things that are not of God. Hallelujah. Helping them to be free. Eli's example as a priest and a man of God must have created a totally warped image of who God is. In his sons. And most probably would have pushed people further away from God. Amen. So we said that. It also resulted in Eli's own death. Eventually. And it caused the very ark of the covenant to be removed from its place. It's a serious thing when the covenant with God gets affected because of ill discipline. Amen. Because of fathers not standing where God has placed them to be. Needless to say, the legacy that was meant to be lived out by his children and his children's children never happened. Their legacy got cut off. I do not want to be a father of generations of muhus. <laughs> Amen. Oh, there goes the muhu family. <laughs> Amen Because Eli didn't take his place His children lost out on their destiny Amen They lost out on their inheritance They could not fulfill their call They could not discover what God has called, called them to be And they brought shame Amen Eli's lack of backbone to walk in God's ways caused the whole nation to suffer. Listen, 
God has called you and I to stand where God has put us. Amen. And uh, because Eli would not address things, it emboldened his sons to continue in their sins. Amen. Listen, there are certain things that I never did at home. Oh, I did them in the background because I was unsaved, naughty boys, but never in front of my father. Amen. You do them in front of your father, you know. You're going to join the gym club. You're going to jump very hard. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I want to say to you men today that God anoints us for the task. You are anointed of God for that task that he's given you. Amen. Genesis 28, 15. Behold, I am with you. And I will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I've done what I've spoken to you. Hallelujah. Man, God has given you a vision. He will not leave you. Amen. He will make you a success. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of God. Of heaven, hallelujah. When Jacob woke up from his slumber, he realized God is actually with me. Amen. And listen, fatherhood comes on us unexpectedly many times. Amen. And that's why many times with the first time when a man hears his wife is praying, oh, oh, he's not very happy. And then she gets upset because he's not happy. Meantime, he's not, he's not happy because he's, he's, she's got a child and they're going to have a child. He feels unprepared. Amen. But God's hand is on you. Amen. Amen. That child comes with a blessing. And that child comes with God's hand on you. I want to say to you fathers, be bold. Be strong. Be courageous. The Lord your God is with you. And he will lead you into the promised land. Amen. You know, when we look at fathers, we think about Abraham. We can see how God led Abraham. God said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Hallelujah. He brought him out. He anointed him for it. He said, get out. I will take you. I don't want to say to you today, I release in this house for every father a fresh anointing. Hallelujah. A fresh move of the Holy Ghost over you. God will pick you up wherever you are. Sometimes say, well, I've lost out on so much. That doesn't mean you need to perpetuate it. That means God will come in at that moment and pick you back up. Say say, amen. And God says, I will take you to the land that I will show you. May the vision and the revelation of God for your family fill your heart. Amen. Secondly, God anoints you for success. He said, I will make you a great nation. That means God says, I'm going to give you a strong household. Hallelujah. He says, I will bless you. What does that mean? It means I will be with you. God says, I will make you fruitful. I will cause you to prosper. You see, when you have vision, God's angels can work with you. Amen. Without vision, we perish. But with vision, God works with you. Amen. And it's a good thing to have order and strength in your home. When I'm talking about order, I'm not talking about, hey, I'll hit you if you do. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when I say order, I'm talking about each family member has a task to fulfill. Amen. Have things to do. Have a place to keep in the family. And you teach them those things. Hallelujah. You set those orders in the home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are certain chores that you need to do, certain places, that, certain things that you have to do. Teach your children responsibility because the Bible says without vision, we cast off restraint. Many children cast restraint off because their fathers are not there to give them vision. Amen. The vision is you're going to have good marks at school. Therefore, you're going to do this amount of homework. Thank you for your enthusiasm. You're going to be home at such and such a time. After school, you will do X, Y, and Z. When you get home, this is how things will be. By the time I get home, X, Y, and Z should be done. If it's not done, 
Don't pass begin. Don't collect 200 rand. Straight to the bathroom. Where the rod of correction will drive out all of your insecurities and all of your problems. You shall be delivered. There will be freedom in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My children knew when I get home, things need to be in order. The, the reward is when it's in order, we're going to play a game together. We're going to have a good time together. It's going to be an awesome time. Hallelujah. Amen. When time comes to eat, you will be clean. Amen. No smelly Philistines at my table. Amen. Hallelujah. We set the direction. Amen. We set what we want. We set the vision. And we help them to achieve their goals. Hallelujah. Through encouragement, through sitting with them, through helping them. Fathers are the strength of their family. Amen. And so God says, I will bless you. I'll make you fruitful. He says, and I will make your name great. That means God, fathers give legacy to their children. Amen. God's anointed you to leave a legacy. A good man, the Bible says, leaves a good inheritance. For their children. That means God's going to bless you so much that your children will be able to inherit as much as they ever going to need. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Amen. If you've got 10 children, the anointing is even bigger on you to lay up an inheritance of 10 cars when they turn 21. 10 houses when they're ready for marriage. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, and I will make you a blessing. That's the anointing of prosperity that on you. Fathers... I release the anointing of prosperity on you. When you set vision for your family, God will provide for it. Where there's vision, there's provision. Amen. God backs a father when he stands in his rightful place. He says in verse, uh, verse 3, I will bless those who bless you. As he'll bring protection around you and bless everything that's happening around you. Amen. He says, and I'll curse those who curse you. It means that God will fight for you. Yes. Amen. When a man sets an inheritance and pushes the order of God, God releases his angels. God fights for you. Hallelujah. He curses those who curses you. He causes no weapon that is formed against you. Cannot prosper. Hallelujah. He causes his hand to be on you and his angels to destroy all the works that the enemy brings against you. A righteous man prospers in all his ways. And God blesses his household. Hallelujah. I mean, that means you become invincible. If you are blessed and whatever you do prospers and your enemy is cursed and whatever they do is cancelled, then you are more than a conqueror. Amen. Amen. As a father, I receive the anointing of God. As a father, I receive the responsibility of God. As a father, I receive the vision of God. As a father, I receive the anointing. God didn't give me children to lead them into defeat. God gave me children to lead them into success. What does a father do? A father brings identity. A father brings protection. A father establishes a legacy. A father ensures inheritance. And a father brings provision. And he brings resources to bear. Hallelujah. In other words, when your son is ready to step into his destiny, his future, your resources are there to back him. Amen. May God make our fathers all so successful that your sons bless you. Your daughters bless you. Your family brings multiplication and increase 
into your household. Hallelujah. Do you know the Jewish system is when a father turns 30, the children take the inheritance. Did you know that? That's why when Jesus told the story of the prodigal son, when the son turned 30, he said, Father, give me my inheritance. He wasn't cheeky. You know, us in the Western culture, we think, what a cheek. His father's not even dead yet. and He's asking for his inheritance. (laughs) But in the Jewish culture, when a son turns 30, he's considered ready to be heir. And to take that legacy that his father's built in him and his energy increases and his father becomes the patriarch. Father enjoys family and children. Sons run the business. Increases the inheritance. Hallelujah. Builds the legacy. And I determine my life. That's how it's going to be in my life. Say amen. Amen. Ah, Tim, that's how it's going to be. You know, this thing of wait till I die. You know, I've got everything. Son, you must learn what it is to struggle. He mustn't learn what it is to struggle. He must learn what it is to stand on your shoulders. I'll preach to this side. Your children are not supposed to learn how to struggle. Your children are supposed to learn how to stand on your shoulders and build the legacy that they've received. Hallelujah. I said, Amen. Amen. You know, wait till I die. Then I'll give you your measly portion after I've spent everything. Because once I turn 60 or 65, now I'm on pension. Now I spend all the money. And by the time I'm 80 and I die, the children are happy because I've been costing them money. (laughs) At last, I don't have to pay those medical bills. At last, you know, we can have that that granny flat and rent it and start making money. (laughs) Amen. When you die, they're rejoicing. Nearman, no, 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 no. You want to build a legacy. You want to give them an inheritance. You want to build them up. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on now. Why don't we have the culture of heaven? Why don't we have the culture that God has given? And build our children up. Stand in the place that God has given us. Fathers, today the anointing of God is on you. I release the anointing, the presence of God on your life, the strength, the vision to be a father. And I bless you. And I declare in the name of Jesus, your sons are blessed. Your daughters are blessed. Your household is blessed. God gives you a legacy. God gives you a a strength to lay up a goodly inheritance. And you will be a successful father and stand in the place that God has given you. Fathers, in the name of Jesus, I release the authority of God. I release the blessing of God. I release on your life the capacity. To build according to the kingdom of God. Right now in the name of Jesus. In areas where you might have not taken up the mantle. In the name of Jesus. I release that mantle and I command you. Take it up right now. In the name of Jesus. And Lord thank you for teaching fathers vision. Teaching fathers revelation. Teaching fathers the place that you have given them. And I thank you that every father will go from glory to glory. And take new ground and take new territory and cause his children to walk behind him in the victory that he has set over his family. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare the blessing on your children, the blessing on your wife, the blessing on your household. I release on you the anointing of the priesthood. I release on you the anointing to be kings in your household. 
And in the name of Jesus, I bless every young man sitting in this place. Even as you are preparing for fatherhood, I say in the name of Jesus, the vision will come on you. You'll be strengthened to build a legacy and take responsibility. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for setting divine order and setting the blessing on every household. And Lord, your spirit that comes and rests on every father mightily. And in the name of Jesus, for every woman sitting here whose husband's not safe, in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing on your husband. I release that anointing on you. And I command you to activate that anointing over your husband. You say, how do I do it? You speak it into being. You declare it over his life. You say to him, you're a man of God. You say to him, you're the father of this household. You bless him in the name of Jesus. God says you call things that are not as though they were and it shall be Amen I said Amen Amen Now Father thank you for your blessing on every family Thank you Jesus In this time Thank you Lord Amen Amen. I just want to add to that There comes the mother with the father It's very important when we do what you said just now is that we must make sure that our children are, are, are mature enough because I don't want to be at 80 years old and have to now start begging or now they've, they've destroyed everything that I've worked for all of my life. So there's wisdom in that. Look, you don't when, give when I say that, I'm yes. not saying the father gives the son the keys and the car and stays at home. When the father hands over legacy, puts the key in the son's hand, he said, you drive, boy. I'm sitting right here next to you. Watching you. Watch that. Watch that. Careful for this. This is how you do this. Amen. You don't hand over and, and walk away. And you still got the son in power. Oh, yes. I still got the power. Okay. I want to I've make sure everybody understand that. We still got the power. Amen. Oh, we don't give our power away. Amen. Very important point. When I say hand over, I'm not saying give it all away. I'm saying you hand over and let them start doing the work. Amen. Hallelujah. You start living on the legacy. Second generation blessing is much more powerful. And each and every one of you fathers, if your father did not give you a legacy because they might not have known these things, you're the one that will start the legacy. Somebody say amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, every eye closed, every head bowed. You are here today, said Pastor Johnny, I do not know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Friend, you can win the whole world. You can have all the money you want. You can, you can have all the, all the possession, everything you want. But if you are not saved, what good is it for a man to win the whole world and lose his soul? You're here today and let me tell you, God came to bring you a legacy of life. To set you free from the power of sin. And to bring life to you. Salvation to your household. You're here today, say, Pastor Johnny, my life's not right with God. I want to make right with Him today. If that is you, I want you to quickly lift your hand all over this place. Lord Jesus, I accept your Lordship. I want you to be Lord over my life. Many men sitting here today and your life's not right with God. You say, Lord, I need to make right. Because listen, friend, you only have authority when you're under authority. And say, Father, I want my whole life to be under your authority. I want you to be Lord of my life. Each and every person here today. You say, Pastor Johnny, my life's not right with God. Please pray for me. If that is you, quickly lift your hand all over this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. All over this place. Just lift those hands. Thank you. I see that hand. Anybody else? Here am I, Lord Jesus. I I need to make right with you. I don't want to leave this place that I am. Anybody else? Thank you. I see that hand. Anybody else? Here I am, Pastor Johnny. I need to make right with God. I see that hand back there. Anybody else? You might be backslidden. 
You might say, Pastor Johnny, I've been living far from God. I've been leading my family away from God, not to God. Even as a believer, I know that I've backslidden, but I want to make right with God. Today, I make a choice. I'm restoring. Lord, restore my backslidings. If that's you, I want you to lift your hand as well. I'm going to pray for you. Thank you back there. Now, everybody who's raised your hand, just keep it raised. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your precious anointing. I Plead the power of the blood over these families. I bind the spirit of deception. I bind every blinding devil in Jesus' name. And I release the revelation of Jesus Christ in this hope, in this church. Over their lives, we thank for touching them now. Now you got your hands raised. Quickly stand wherever you are. All over this place, you got your hands raised. Quickly stand. Don't stay seated. Don't put your hand down. Don't stay where you are. Just stand. All over this place, stand.